Welcome to the Curiosity screencast. Curiosity is a browser-based data exploration software developed by Kanohi. It allows you to find patterns, correlations and anomalies in your data easily. Curiosity can be used to explore all kinds of multidimensional data such as financial data, transaction data or customer data. It integrates advanced 3D visualization with data mining capabilities and runs in any web browser. Therefore, it can be integrated into your existing web applications and allows you to obtain a deep understanding for your important business data in a short time. Curiosity includes nine different data viewers which present your data in different ways and each have unique advantages. You can switch viewer at any time if you want to explore a different aspect of your data. Data is presented as visual features and you can select a data subset by selecting its corresponding visual features. In this example, clusters are represented as trees and you can select a cluster by clicking on a tree. On the right side, you see cluster averages and a selection of data records from the cluster. You can choose to select the cluster for further analysis and make it the currently visible set. Now again, you can explore the subset by viewing it in one or more viewers. You can later switch back to the main dataset by clicking on the top entry in the selection history on the left. Let's have a look on the available viewers in detail. The first viewer shows basic statistical data such as minimum, maximum, negative and positive range, average and standard deviation. Our example data is a database of mutual funds. The available fields include the performance data for different time periods, the amount of money invested in the fund, the fees and other fields. In addition, a histogram is shown and you can explore it by clicking on individual segments. The second viewer shows correlation between data fields. The correlation coefficients are shown as a color-coded bar chart. You can easily identify correlations and negative correlations in the currently visible records. The bars consist of a plus or a minus signs depending on the sign of the correlation coefficient. In this example of mutual fund data, we can see that the performance data for different time periods are strongly correlated. There seems to be also a correlation between the fund's total expense ratio and the performance. So according to this database, it makes sense to buy more expensive funds. The third viewer is a classic bar chart viewer with advanced grouping options. You can divide the data in a series of groups or in a matrix by selecting two grouping options. Grouping options include clustering, grouping according to a field containing category strings or grouping by intervals or of a numeric variable. In the latter case, you can choose between equidistant histogram grouping or a method which will choose intervals in such a way that they contain similar numbers of records. Then, the intervals have different sizes, which means that you have short intervals in regions with high data density and long intervals in regions with low data density. You can choose between different visualization options. The bar can display the number of records in a group or the sum or average of the values of a numeric field. For example, you can display the average three years performance or the sum of the money invested in each group. The fourth viewer lets you look at many variables at the same time by displaying record groups as complex, complex objects. It is not well suited if you want to obtain precise values but it is very good at getting an overview of what's going on in the dataset. We have the same grouping options as in the previous viewer. You can configure the tree by assigning data fields to visual features of the tree. You can also play with the tree to explore its functioning. Curiosity applies dimension reduction to position similar trees close to each other in the landscape. Like this, you quickly see which groups are similar regarding the values of all, num all numerical fields. The fifth viewer is a combination of the previous two viewers. 
You can look at many variables by displaying them as a tree, but you have the same matrix grouping options as in the bar chart viewer. This viewer lets you look at up to 1300 values at the same time, but it will not feel like looking at a huge Excel spreadsheet. The sixth viewer is another group comparison viewer. It is using a simpler but more abstract model. It cannot display as many variables at the same time as the tree, but offers better accuracy. Again, you can configure the tree by assigning data variables to visual features. And again, you can play with the object to explore its functioning. The next viewer is a data density viewer. It is ideal to identify typical data records or outliers. It has two modes, one showing surfaces of constant data density and the other displaying the data as cubes. It lets you choose three numerical fields and will show you for which combinations of values there are records in the dataset. Let's have a look at the cube mode first. You can decide to show only cubes containing a minimum of records or only cubes containing less than a certain number of records. This lets you focus on typical data or outliers. If you use both sliders, you can restrict the view to something like typical outliers. You can click on a cube and Curiosity will show you the data records contained in the cube. The ESO surface mode lets you see in which areas records are concentrated. You can define a certain percentage of the data and Curiosity will show you a surface in the data space which encloses the selected amount of data. It is possible to make the visible data the new current set. Like this you can focus on typical data easily and ignore outliers. The next viewer is a density viewer for group comparison. It draws overlapping ESO surfaces for different groups. It is, for instance, very good to check clusterings. In this case, the clustering has produced well-separated clusters in the high-performance area, but they are not very well-separated in the low-value area. You can also compare different groups and see where their values overlap. The last viewer lets you compare data distributions. This could be, for instance, the age distribution of your customers or any other numerical variable. In this example, we could, for instance, compare the performance distributions of different geographical regions. Each flower displays the data distribution of a group, with low leaves indicating records with low values and high leaves records with high values. Again, groups with similar distributions are shown as neighbors. This is the end of our presentation. I hope you have enjoyed this quick overview. For further information, visit our website at www.kanohi.ch